Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to have another little recap on some of the things that not only the government that's delivering on this Brexit now, but also Vote Leave, which included a number of the most senior ministers in government now, including Boris Johnson, promised as a result of Brexit. And I'd forgotten about this document, actually. I mean, you know, these sort of things popped up, of course. There were a lot of people, of course, that knew in 2016 what Brexit would actually entail and certainly what things would be possible, but also what things would be impossible in terms of things being promised. And as soon as the referendum result came in and the government determined that they were going to uh, to deliver on, on, on Brexit, they sat down and, and said, right, we're going to make a record of everything they're saying because we know they can't possibly deliver on these things and we're going to make a record to remind people what it was and this document I know it's a, it's a put it in the, the link below if you want to read it in full yourself um, contains 10 promises now not all of them are necessarily terribly relevant I'll go through them all quickly and then pick on the really relevant ones so these are the 10 promises and it, it provides quotes from both the Vote Leave campaign, which was the official uh, Brexit campaign. Again, you know, run by the likes of Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, Dominic Cummings, Priti Patel, Dominic Raab, they were all in there. And um, as well as the government, the Conservative government. So ministers for the government, as well as, you know, representatives of Vote Leave, both made these promises. First one was same benefits outside the single market. Second, I'll go through some in more detail. Second, new trade deals ready to sign on day one. Major savings from the EU budget. No change to Northern Ireland border arrangements. Preserving citizens, workers and environmental rights. Protecting national security. Maintaining the integrity of the United Kingdom. Strengthening science and research. Out of the EU by March 2019 dramatic reduction of migration now the ninth one i'm just going to completely dispel there because that is let's face it irrelevant out of the eu by march 2019 obviously didn't happen interesting that the people at the time sort of knew it wasn't going to happen um <clears throat> but the, i mean that's it that's an irrelevance because that doesn't actually matter in fact it was i'll tell you what was quite interesting and and you know, the uh, many of the, the Leave proponents, including Nigel Farage, actually suggested that, you know, we wouldn't be held. Obviously, the date of 19th of March wasn't mentioned in the referendum because, you know, it was just, you know, people were being told that the idea of the Article 50 triggering would take two years of negotiating. No one actually suggested at the time, even Nigel Farage, that we should stick to that two year timetable. They said, you know, in fact, they actually said the Brexiteers, we shouldn't even trigger Article 50 until we've sorted out what exactly we're going to do. But, so we have a little look at some of these in terms of, you know, so think to yourself, what, what are we now being told that Brexit was all about? So, first one, same benefits outside the single market. So, a couple of little quotes here that were interesting. So, David Davis, who was, you know, part of vote leave as well as the government uh, says the idea that our trade will suffer because we stop imposing terrible rules such as the clinical trial directive is silly um, you know it says our trade will almost certainly continue with the EU on similar to current circumstances the reality is that the hard-headed pragmatic businessmen on the continent will do everything to ensure that trade with Britons continues uninterrupted this was the, this is what's you know resulted in this idea that German car manufacturers would would barrack their governments if they didn't let us have a deal. I wouldn't say we haven't had a peep from the German car manufacturers because we have, in fact, in the last week. But it has been to make clear that they do not expect the EU and they do not want the EU to compromise the integrity of the single market for the sake of giving us a deal. So obviously that one was dispelled completely and again was known at the time. The other one about new trade deals ready to, to go uh, to sign on day one. Now, I mean, that one was just 
clueless. That wasn't even just a lie. That was just a demonstration that the people that were running these Brexit campaigns didn't understand how things work. You know, um, it, so a couple of quotes here. So from the government, uh, this was David Davis again for the government. We can't actually sign up. Uh, sorry, we can't actually sign until the day we leave. But I've got a very strong suspicion there will be a lot of things to sign that very next day. Now, on this particular occasion, the very next day was uh, the end of January this year. How many things did we sign the day after the actual Brexit day this year? I'm trying to do it from memory. I think it's round about none. How many have we signed since? Because we're now no longer a member of the EU. The transition period time is ticking away. We now know that we're not going to extend it. That, that's not happening. Um, oh, yeah, none again. None at all. None. Uh, vote leave what did they say about it again this is you know so because some people may point to the fact that you know it's all very well quoting what the government said in 2016 and 2017 it's a different government now well it's not it's the same government but it's different people in the senior positions but those the people who are in those senior positions now were in senior positions in vote leave and what did they say about it after we vote leave we would immediately be able to start negotiating new trade deals this isn't after we trigger Article 50, and it's not after we've left the EU. This is after we vote leave. So, you know, four years ago, this should have happened. We would immediately be able to start negotiating new trade deals with emerging economies and the world's biggest economies, the US, China and Japan, as well as Canada, Australia, South Korea, New Zealand and so on, which could enter into force immediately after the UK leaves the EU. Now, there were a number of issues with negotiating while still members. This is true. However, we were able to organise interim agreements um, because we have done with some countries. None of the ones been mentioned there. None of them. In fact, just to pick out a few, we know all about the US trade deal and what that's going to involve. Uh, China have told us to sod off. Uh, Japan have told us we've got six weeks i think that's now five weeks at this point um canada have said wait until you've got a deal with the eu then we'll talk australia similar thing there um south korea i don't even know what south korea have said new zealand and so on it says so how's that gone so we were supposed to have all these trade deals in place by now they were supposed to have been signed the very next day None have been signed in, in the five months since the very next day. Next one, it says major savings from the EU budget. We know this is a nonsense, of course, but I do want to point out the key quote here because, of course, there was the bus, the battle bus, that we give £350 million a week to the EU, which isn't true, by the way, but it says let's fund our NHS instead. Now, some people have tried to play semantics on this. Oh, it doesn't actually promise to give 350 quid. Uh, sorry, 350 million quid a week extra to the NHS. That was just included in the NHS. No. Quote from Vote Leave website, let's give our NHS the 350 million pounds the EU take every week. Now, I suppose if you were going to argue semantics, you could argue that because this 350 million pounds a week is fictitious, that, you know, there isn't any actual money to give them anyway. Um but nonetheless, that was the promise. And that is not what has happened. Some people have tried to suggest that the government have actually increased the amount of funding for the NHS when the coronavirus hit. But they have not. Because that the extra money that has been allocated towards healthcare has actually gone directly to private companies. And what the UK government said about this, once we've left the EU, decisions on how taxpayers' money will be spent will be made in the UK. As we will no longer be members of the single market, we will not be required to make vast contributions to the EU budget. Now, it does point out in here, I'm not going to go through every little bit um, about just how little it was. It was, you know, it was about a third. Well, our actual contributions were about a third of what they were quoting them to be. In fact, less than a third. Um, but the key point is that what money we were paying, which was much less than they claimed, is an investment because we got way more back in terms of the trade, which we are about to find out. Uh, it also noted that the vote leave campaign here, 
made £111 billion worth of spending pledges during the campaign, including scrapping VAT on household energy bills. Now, bear in mind, like I said, those senior members of Vote Leave, now at the time, I would have said, I didn't have this channel then, but I would have said, and I'd certainly said to people I, I talked to in person, it's all right, these it's all right, the likes of Boris Johnson and Michael Gove and uh, even Nigel Farage and Aaron Banks making these promises about spending pledges. None of them are in a position to be able to, to action them. They are now. Boris Johnson is. So we need to keep an eye on that one as well. Here's, of course, a big one. I'm not going to go on too much about this because I talk about this quite regularly because it's huge. No change to Northern Ireland border arrangements. Now, I'm going to do a couple of the quotes here. So um, from Vote Leave. Again, Vote Leave is the real crucial one because you have to remember um, what the government would have said would have been in line with what Theresa May wanted. She's no longer there. Vote Leave was saying things in line with Boris Johnson. He was one of the key figures in Vote Leave. The unique status Irish citizens are recorded with the UK predates EU membership and will outlast it. There is no reason why the UK's only land border should be any less open after Brexit than it is today. So here's the thing now. We're in, we're in the situation now where the, the promise here, no change to Northern Ireland border arrangements. There inevitably will be. But which border? That's the, clear, that's the query, isn't it? If Boris Johnson follows through on his commitments, the Northern Ireland Protocol, then there will be changes to the Northern Ireland border arrangements with Great Britain. In particular, with the northwest of England and North Wales, which will be the, the two closest points of, of trade contact. If he doesn't follow through on that, then he creates the much more serious problem with change to border arrangements between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland, which doesn't really bear thinking about. So another lie there. Uh, next one, preserving citizens, workers and environmental rights. They're not even trying to claim that. I mean, that's all gone. Not even trying to claim it anymore. I think I can just move on from that one. Uh, protecting national security. Now, Vote Leave said, operational law enforcement, cooperation with our European partners will continue because it is in everyone's interests. It says, if we vote leave, we will continue to operate, to cooperate, sorry, with our European partners to fight terrorism and unorganised crime. We will negotiate a new UK-EU extradition treaty without accepting the supremacy of EU law. Where is it then? Because we're not. And it's not that we don't have this agreement. We're not even trying to negotiate this agreement. So what this means is that at the end of this year, we are not going to have an extradition treaty with, with, uh, with anyone uh, in Europe or in the EU at any rate, because so far it's automatic. Which means, of course, that, and also that the general lack of cooperation with police forces means we will not know the criminal records of, of people entering the country from the EU if they're not stopped at the EU end and they pass it to this country because we won't have access to that data. So we could have criminals, serious criminals, passing into the UK. Similarly, there could be people who commit serious crimes in the UK, manage to flee to an EU country, who will not then extradite them because there'll be no extradition treaty. In fact, some EU countries, um, I think Germany, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but I think there are there's at least one EU country that simply does not extradite its own citizens the only exception to this is they will extradite to another EU country if necessary, because that is an EU rule. Um, but without that, they do not extradite to non-EU countries. I'm pretty sure that is Germany. Next one is maintaining the integrity of the United Kingdom. I mean, look at this. Vote leave. If we vote to leave, then I think the union will be stronger. Boris Johnson may well be blocking attempts for, to, to even pave the way for a referendum on Scottish independence, but the, the bottom line is the union is far from stronger. It is much weaker. And the problem is, um, 
You know, it's like the quote from Star Wars, the more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Boris Johnson doesn't have star systems, but nonetheless, the analogy it fits. You know, when you tighten your grip, that's not the way to, to conduct an alliance. That doesn't work. That's the iron fist. That doesn't, that's no good. Um, you just, he risks putting the country in a position where it will make no difference even if we do get a better government. And even if we can somehow change the constitutional arrangements to make sure that something like this can never happen in the future, so much damage will be done to relations within the union. Um, potentially that's already happened. I don't know. Potentially that has already happened. So the union is definitely weaker. And it may be permanently weaker to the point where it does actually fracture. Uh, next one, it says strengthening science and research. I mean, that's gone. I mean, that, that has actually gone. Um, you know, we had news of the new research centre in Leicester for, for you know, the, the related to the Space Centre. Uh, but that's as our membership of the European Space Agency. EU schemes we're not taking part in. So, of course, we're not strengthening science and research. Now, in theory, we could do it ourselves. That is something potentially we could go alone on. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to really fund in a very serious way research into emergent technology. You'd have to make sure that we can attract the best scientists around the world. And it is not enough to say that they will be exempt from our new immigration plans because we've had situations in this country already where top academics have left, not because they were treated badly but because their families were they're going to come over with their families that's how it works when you treat their families like crap they don't really feel like being in this country when they're not when their family's not made to feel welcome they're not welcome so that is gone i mean we, the whole scientific community is quite clear about that there's going to be a massive downturn and and the uk has a pretty good record when it comes to scientific research we it's a phenomenal source of income. In fact, we should we should be doing much more scientific research because it pays so very well. The, the, the payout is incredible. And then the final one that I would talk about is this idea of dramatic reduction of migration, which is, of course, an absolute nonsense because although I talk about their immigration plans, we all know they're not going to be implemented. I mean, the rules will be passed into law, no doubt about that. But then there will be pages and pages and pages of exceptions. Because basically at the end of this immigration bill, when it, event, when it all goes through and it's all put into practice more specifically for next year, it'll have a big old line at the bottom of it says, none of these apply to anyone who's actually needed to work in this country. So in that, in that fight, you'll actually just, it'll just look as if you're talking tough, but migration will actually increase. We've already seen it. We've already seen it. Migration from outside of the EU. Migration from in the EU shouldn't. That, that'll go down because why would they even want to work here now? Um, so there it is. I'd forgotten about that. Um, that's uh, some of the things that they promised with quotes in here as to what they actually said. It's worth a good little read. It'll also be worth another little read, I think, in about, oh, I don't know, seven months time. Um, but I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.